Good morning. Uh, we are going to start our public session now with this 10 minutes Portuguese traditional delay. Thank you for your understanding. Um, welcome to uh, Library of Mervilla. This is a new cultural equipment of the city. Claudio will explain you a little bit of where we are and soon after we will start our public session with Marie and Elena. Thank you so much for coming and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you um, and welcome to um, Biblioteca de Marvila, Marvila Library. Uh, uh, we opened in November 2016 and I would like to show you just a few images of what it was before and what it is now. So. This was the previous building, so we are in um, Quinta das Fontes, fountain, it, it was a, a Marvilla had a, a, has a huge history of uh, small farming around, uh, and this was uh, one of them. Um, it was, have you seen this in, at the entrance? Okay, so this, the idea was to maintain it and to keep this as, as the central part of this building, so everything was built around it. And this is where it started. So uh, I'm not sure. Sorry, I, n I don't know really for how long it uh, it uh, the building was. Um, but as I said, it opened in November 2016. So we are working since then. Uh, just for you to see a bit. And this is what we have now. This neighborhood didn't have any kind of cultural equip equi equipment uh, at, at the date, so this was the first one. And um, it's now trying to develop projects uh, not only concerning library issues, but also we have this auditorium, we have other rooms, uh, uh, the, um, a room for children, so we are trying to develop in this neighborhood around and throughout Marvilla, uh, uh, every kind of projects related to a library or not. Sorry, this is Portuguese strategy. <laughs> uh, this is important because we are the first library in the, uh, we belong to the public uh, um, network of Lisbon and uh, there's this uh, program, uh, Library 21st, and uh, this is the first library built in the in the um, in that framework. Uh, so we we this library is not seen as only a library; it's seen as much more in the um, development of the area. Okay. Culture. This is the older house where people used to live, and uh, we it was um, that's where we work now. Where we part of you were this morning, the other room, baby's room. <laughs> Our backyard. This is not seen normally in the library. It's a fountain from the old farm. No. Okay, and the neighbors around where we are trying to, to work with since we are here. And basically that's it. Just for you to have a small presentation of what we were, what was this pl place, what we are trying to do now, and hope uh, you have a nice session from now on. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Marie. I am the coordinator of the On The Move uh, network, uh, which is a cultural mobility information network. Uh, and we are very glad to have our meeting here uh, with uh, 
many of our members and with the great, great hosting of Polo Cultural Gaivotas Bovista and the team of Mafalda here. Um, so On The Move is a network which provides free, regular and updated information about mobility opportunities in different disciplines. And uh, right now we have uh, 48 member organizations and seven individuals. And the good, I mean, there are two good news, in fact. Uh, half of the members are here in Lisbon. And this is the first time that we have so many members in one city where we host the General Assembly. And the second good news is that you don't need to be a member to access the information which is online. So whatever information which is online is open to everybody. Um, I, I would like also to say that, to give maybe a, um, a definition of what we mean by cultural mobility or artist mobility. Uh, for us, uh, and we refer to a, um, um, a report which was made in 2008, which is called Mobility Matters. Uh, mobility is any type of uh, initiative, any type of experience which allow one artist one theatre company, one dance company, one collective, for instance, to have an experience for a certain period of time in another country. So it can be an experience, a short-term experience, it can be a long-term experience. And for us, mobility can have like different type of format. It can be a residency, it can be a touring, it can be a collaboration project, it can be also training opportunities in another country. So it's very kind of wide scope. And through On The Move as well, we try as much as possible also through our member organization and all the members are, I mean, they are physically, most of them are here in this room, but also we put all the organization and the website on the PowerPoint so that you can have access also later to the information. So we try as much as possible to cover all discipline in um, the, the, the kind of information that we are sharing. Um, so we are here today for this public uh, discussion. In fact, the discussion is also live streamed uh, through the partnership of one of our members, HowlRound. And um, we uh, prepared this discussion yesterday with the member and what we really would like, that's why there is no chair here, there is no table, is really like to have a common discussion with you. And I think we are almost half-half, you know, like uh, half of member organization of On The Move and half of, uh, you know, like people, artists, cultural professionals based in Lisbon or maybe in other city in Portugal if you made your way this morning to come here. So we really want to engage into a, a conversation uh, about this question of tips and advice to international, to help to international your practice or to strengthen it at an European and international level. And we would like very much to have this shared discussion during about like two hours. Uh, there is another thing I would like to say before I pass the word to uh, one of my colleagues. It's, um, I mean, as you can, we are an uh, international and European network and very often English is not our native language. Uh, you can say, you can <laughs> notice that with me, for instance. Uh, so it's important also in the conversation, if you feel that you prefer to have some form of translation from Portuguese to English for the question, please do not hesitate and we will coordinate with Mafalda. This is also very important in the sense of the conversation. Um, in order to kick off the discussion, uh, we thought it would be also interesting to, about this question of internationalization of practices to understand also the answer to the question why. Why do you want to go international? Why it's important to position yourself as a company, as an artist on a more European and international scope? And I would like uh, to pass the mic to uh, Marian, uh, one of our individual uh, members, to, to maybe give some uh, of the ideas she has about this question of the why. And I also would like to say that Marian is not any type of individual member. She was even the founder of On The Move like a few years back. So thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Marie. Um, founder, not funder. Too bad. <laughs> I would have liked to have been the funder. But. So um, thank you for coming. It's really nice to see faces that one knows and one doesn't know. Um, I'd just like to start with a little question. How many of the Portuguese or people coming to here from Portugal uh, have had experiences with artistic mobility. 
Not a huge amount, okay. Well, those of you who have will understand what I'm going to say. We, we wanted to give a couple of hints about what artistic mobility is, and we thought it would be good to put them in a kind of a scheme or a frame. Uh, and you could choose lots of different ways of doing this, but I chose to look at what's called the, the value chain or the production chain, which is used in a lot of different industries. And so it breaks down all the different steps of what it means to produce something and what is involved. It is cyclical, so it could start with any one of the different steps, um, and it continues. Each step builds on the other. And I wanted to um, present it to you in the framework of mobility because from the beginning, in the 90s, when many of us started to say to the culture politicians, we, want, we need you to support our mobility, uh, we always said that mobility is not an end in itself, it's a means to an end. And it's a means uh, to several ends, some of which can be quantified. You might get a production or a publication or a piece of visual art or a film out of it. But many of the benefits of mobility cannot be quantified because they have to do with much more deep things, changes in our values, uh, appreciation of a different kind of perspective. So if we look at the value chain, it starts usually with crea creation, the creation process, then the production, then the diffusion of whatever has been diffused, then we move to something which is often called documentation, but that could also be criticism or reviews of the work uh, or works about the work. It could even be just plain communication about the work. That leads to education and training, whether that is education or training of the artist, of the cultural manager, of the audience, use of the work in other kinds of courses, and of course, that's the production of intellectual broadening of knowledge, which goes back into the creation phase. So for each one of those phases, what we can get from the best, let's say, artistic mobility experience will be quantitative creation. You can go someplace and create a work, or it can be part of your creation period, but it can also be inspiration. It can also be seeing what artists of the same discipline are doing in another country to be able to reflect on your own work. It could be research for materials, researching a story, researching the smells of a neighborhood, researching the sounds of, of a neighborhood. In terms of production, in the performing arts, we, we naturally think of co-production. So when producers from different festivals, for example, might pool their money and resources together to help produce the work of an artist. Or it could be that um, one is looking for members of a team to help produce a great lighting designer, a really inventive illustrator for publication. In terms of diffusion, Marie has all also talked about this in terms of, terms of touring. But diffusion is also a means for artists to actually present their work to a different kind of audience coming from a different culture. How do they see my work? Do they react to it in the same way? Do they react to it differently? Do they react to it at all? I want to judge my own work from that audience's reaction. And audiences can be diffusing themselves too. We now see that where people have the will and the resources, they will go to another country or city to see a work or to follow the artists that they like. Documentation. Uh, a few years ago, the Flemish Theater Institute made uh, uh, an initiative which actually asks the question, when artists are so nomadic, when they're so mobile nowadays, we, as the National Theatre Institute, cannot put on our database of artists that this is our artist. And at that time, they were looking at the choreographer Meg Stewart, who was born in the US, was kind of adopted in Belgium and Flanders as a, a Flemish artist, not really, 
had long residencies in those years in, in Vienna, in Austria. So whose artist was she? So even the documentation of artists, and if you work in film, this is crazy. You know, every member of the film crew comes from a different country. Where is the documentation point? Well, it's shared by all of us. Um, and we can also say that critics, theater critics, film critics, music critics, also are part of this internationalization of the documentation. No longer can they only review and analyze a work from their own cultural perspective. They have to look more widely. Um, and then we go into education and training of yourself as an artist, of yourself as a cultural manager, um, but also uh, training young artists and cultural managers how to be mobile. And a lot of uh, what On The Move does is give courses and training uh, and information about what to expect if you want to internationalize your career, if you want to start working abroad, if you want to start experimenting, what are the tips and tricks? And I think that's the, the best introduction to this day. So we will be counting on you, after my colleague speaks, um, to ask us any kinds of questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marian. Maybe I pass the mic to um, Johan Flock from the Fresh Art Coalition Europe, also like to give other form of uh, input in this uh, reason why also like you want to develop your career in a European or international context. Hi, hello, good morning. I'm standing so I can see you and you can see me. Um, um, I'm, I'm gonna just uh, go back to Marie's um, uh, presentation as she was talking about these uh, wonderful studies made 10 years ago already by the European Commission Mobility Matters. Uh, in this study, very long, very detailed, uh, very precise, um, they were actually analyzing some of the interesting um, uh, motivations for uh, creators, creative workers to try to be mobile and work internationally. Um, and one, uh, I mean, I've shortlisted a couple of, of these reasons because I, I guess it, it encompassed what Marian was uh, presenting. Um, the first reason is economic reasons. If we are mobile as artists and uh, cultural managers is because we need the financial, financial resources that are attached to mobility. So we need uh, to sell our work abroad. We need to find partners for our production abroad. So this is the reality. We don't like to talk about money in the arts. We're always a bit afraid, uh, but this is the main reason actually, like to work internationally. Um, the second big reason is attached to prestige, um, which is also something that is quite interesting. In many countries, when artists and companies are building their career uh, and their professional pathway, they really take into account that the international dimension of their work will bring prestige and will help them develop further their career locally back home. And we have a lot of examples of this. Uh, Australian companies touring the world, but not being even known in their own country and not being able to present their work in Australia. And it's because they toured so widely across the world that suddenly they get the recognition and funding from their local partners and access to local festivals, etc. So the international dimension actually brings credibility, recognition to artistic work. And in the end, both journalists, critics, funders are aware of this, um, that the international dimension is uh, quite important in a, an artistic pathway. So it's also a motivation, like to be, to present your work in Taiwan or in Montreal can be very in a way prestigious so you can put that on your you know funding application and you get uh, maybe hopefully more support um, there is a th uh, like a third big um, 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 motivation to work internationally and Marion touched uh, upon this already it's the idea of artistic dialogue and it's not entirely the intercultural dialogue. I, I try to artificially uh, distinguish the two. 
Um, the artistic dialogue is really the idea that for my work, I need to partner with artists or artistic contributors from other countries. And I want to work with a Finnish music composer, or I really want to work with this uh, Singapore-based choreographer. And it's because we believe that um, uh, there is a, a, an artistic development that is very interesting, that we want to partner with um, um, a foreign artists or foreign contributors. And this is a big drive. And uh, for meeting a lot of artists, I can see that many artists are keen to work with um, their peers from other countries. And this is a real true drive for many, many um, uh, um, countries, I would say. And we have this effect also, this idea of uh, I'm, I'm an actor, I'm, I created this piece about my context, my story, the story of my city, and I want to present this to another context. I want to see how the Japanese react to my piece. I want to see how I can translate my emotions, my you know, creativity, everything, into another country, another culture. And I want to, I'm, I'm looking at this um, confrontation, this discussion that can um, be interesting. And then there is a, a last big uh, motivation, which is not exactly a motivation. This is what we call the opportunity effect. Basically, I don't plan to go to Taiwan for two months for a residency, but there is a wonderful call and they're looking for artists. So, you know, like, why not me? I should apply to this. So there is this kind of random, so many opportunities are existing out there. And in the end, you have calls to uh, be programmed in festivals, calls to go to residencies, calls to go to see work. I mean, you have so many opportunities that sometimes it's not, you don't have a strategy. And we are not always very good with strategies anyway. But it's just like, okay, why not? I mean, there is an opportunity for me to present my work in Mexico. I should, I should apply. It would be silly not to apply. So sometimes, and I, I also see that with many um, artists and, and creative workers, they really want to, you know, grasp the opportunities. And then we have what we call the bad motivations. And I'm gonna go very quickly through that. But there, there is also with these kind of motivations, you know, financial, prestige, opportunities, etc. cetera, there, there are sometimes some side effects uh, with the mobility, which is, I want to go on holiday. <laughs> and that would be wonderful to be selected by this call, by this residency place in, uh, in Japan, because I've never been to Japan, and I would like to go and visit Japan and discover the, the culture, etc. And there is sometimes a, a kind of a, a lack of distinction of personal, private life, holiday, family holiday, and work. And sometimes we, we don't do this uh, distinction very well. And there is another, I would say, um, side effect, which is um, I want to discover the world. Uh, it's not necessarily to go on holiday, but sometimes um, I have a production, I have my I'm a choreographer, I have my dancers with me, I have a big set, I have my technicians, but I really want to go and travel the world, whatever, wherever. Whoever wants me, they have me. And sometimes I say to these artists, like, if you want to go and travel and discover the world, do buy you a ticket. You don't have to have a full production traveling with you. You don't have to go through all the visa process and the fret and et cetera, you know, like, and the cargo and all these uh, things. Like, if you just want to discover the world, we have a lot of, you know, low-cost airlines and uh, lots of opportunities to go and travel the world. This is for me. <laughs> I hope this, you come with many questions and comments. Thank you very much, uh, Johan. On this um, international path, um, it's the question that we often get, either for people who have not been so much on, in a European international context to develop work, or for people who have been quite active but who are like repositioning themselves as far as their companies, as far as their artist collective is concerned. The question is, 
very often like how do we start or how do we continue to work but maybe in another, in another uh, world region for instance. And here, uh, before we open the first floor to discussion, uh, I would like to invite my colleague who will also like uh, co-facilitate this discussion with me, so Elena Di Federico who works for the IETM network, the International Network for Contemporary Performing Arts. Uh, to open also like this discussion about the relevance and the role of networks at a European and international level and how networks can help you as an artist, as an organization, as a company also like to, you know, like discover new context and to be also like an entry door to develop some projects. So, yeah. Yes, thank you Marie, good morning everyone. So indeed we're moving now the discussion from the why, getting international into the how, and I think this is gonna be the biggest part of the discussion today. So as Marie said, I'm Elena Di Federico and I work for IETM, which is the International Network for Contemporary Performing Arts. Uh, an international network indeed, working, gathering uh, a huge number of uh, contemporary performing arts professionals, mostly organizations, but also individuals uh, around the world, uh, literally. Um, ITM is, is, an, uh, is a long, uh, has, a, has a long life, has had a long life. It was set up in 1981. Uh, it has, of course, developed while the word and the context for uh, international collaborations developed as well. So it was created in a moment where international collaborations and contacts were particularly different, difficult for the independent scene, they were quite uh, a given or um, more, let's say, they were easier for national institutions and public funded organizations, theaters, uh, but collaborations within the performance, uh, uh, the, the independent sector particularly, were much more complicated. Things are got, have gotten easier in a way uh, in the last years, low cost uh, uh, travel options that Johan mentioned, uh, the internet, I mean, you name it, we are much more connected internationally at least in theory, and virtually. But what ITM believes is that nothing can replace live encounters. So we used to say that we believe in live arts as we believe in live encounters, or vice versa. So what ITM does basically is to organize large gatherings, large meetings uh, twice per year and smaller meetings around the year where um, members, but also non-members, um, professionals and non-professionals from the performing arts field can get together and simply get to know each other, first and foremost on a personal level, uh, and establish this kind of connections, which do not necessarily need immediately to collaborations, co-productions, or other formalized way to work together, but they often are a, a springboard towards something. So they develop and they are nurtured through time, and they can eventually end up uh, with joint projects, for example, collaborations, touring, co-productions, uh, new projects, etc. But there are many other networks existing here, and some of them are here in, the, in this room, so I would be really happy to pass the microphone, for example, to uh, Stefan, who is from another network, uh, and then we move the microphone around. The aim is also to move here, you know, like we are not facing always the stage. So, merci Marie, thank you. Hi, I'm Stefan. I coordinate Chico Strada Network, which is a European network for circus arts and street arts. So I'm going to say one thing which is very obvious, and then I'm going to say one thing which could be practical. So the very obvious thing is that networks are a place where you accelerate, which means that you accelerate because you make new meetings, you encounter new people, you eventually have new ideas, you can build new projects. And the idea, if you do it well, it can be more sustainable. And this is obvious, but it's, it's good to repeat it anyway. And the practical thing is that networks are a place for resources. Resources as uh, information. So if you find information, you find knowledge, and if you find knowledge, you know a little bit better how to you know, go abroad, why do you have to go abroad, how you can go abroad. So these are the two things I would like to share and, you know, I'm here to discuss with you if you have any, any questions. Um, I'd like to ask Ulrika maybe from ITI, the International Theatre Institute, if you can say what that is about and what is the importance of networks and what does ITI do to facilitate these international collaborations? Okay, uh, ITI is uh, the International Theatre Institute, which is a uh, UNESCO-founded organization from 1948. 
after the Second World War, where the goal was to bring uh, culture over borders and uh, have artistic exchange to make the world a better place. Uh, and um, so we gather sometimes, and also so the networks, you, you might think that because we live in uh, a time now where you can do everything yourself on internet, um, it's it's still valuable to to know that there are centers like ITI has a hundred centers all over the world, and Europe on the Move has centers, and to know that you can just uh, call us or visit us, and we know what person to guide you to or what web page to guide you to. It's it's just make makes things easier for uh, for you. So we're we're here to help, and we have a lot of networks and committees and we can we can guide you to uh, wherever you want so uh, yeah that's that's the best thing with uh, with networks like this <laughs> we're focusing here we had three networks in a row that work for the performing arts but in that are networks in for all disciplines and also interdisciplinary so i think it's interesting to hear from anna uh, about the vnl the new uh, workshop vnl uh, hello i'm anna galas koshil and um, i'm a president of on the move but uh, for many years i was working at the polish theater institute however recently i changed my work and i started to create um with a team, an international um, um, event, but also a program. It's called Warsaw Biennial, Biennale Warszawa. And it's important to say that it's a new institution, a public municipal institution in Warsaw. Uh, but it's really important in terms of creation, new place and new program that the from the first beginning the international dimension was something really important for us and the key issue and it was during all our talks something that was like on the top of the list of our aims that this is going to be like really crucial and of course mobility as a very important factor of it um, i think that today also when you really want to make your work international, but also invite different artists for your project. Uh, of course, the mobility aspect is, uh, is something that you have to take into consideration. But I think that it's also a time when transnational collaboration is so important. That we are not thinking anymore, or we shouldn't think, in my opinion, so much about this national dimension on early promoting of our countries as it is but i think that it's like very important factor of building real transnational groups of artists activists uh, cultural professionals and mobility is really like a crucial issue for that thanks anna getting slightly political i was in a meeting last week uh, and somebody said it beautiful, saying that we were talking about a situation in Europe with shrinking spaces for civil society and this re return of nationalism and this rhetoric of the member states. Uh, and somebody said it beautiful, saying uh, mobility, particularly artistic mobility, the mobility of people uh, is one big threat for the nation state, for the rhetoric of the nation state, closing on itself, closing the borders. So I like to call it an antidote, not a threat. Um, we're talking about work networks, but it's not the only way you can engage in mobility. Residencies are probably another uh, maybe obvious way to start really getting into the context somewhere else. So I'm looking at Marie, uh, maybe to talk about uh, trans artists. Uh, yes, I'm well, weirdly located in this room. So going to turn this way. Uh, so I'm Marie Foll, I work for Dutch Culture and we run a platform called Trans Artist, which uh, lists about 1,500 residencies worldwide. Um, we try to keep up to date, but I mean, uh, the staff working on this is extremely small, so a lot of things are not up to date, but it's still a good resource to be able to find places, to filter through them and to be able to know, uh, okay, I have a specific idea in mind, I, I work in a specific discipline and then filter through the database based on those criteria or to see the latest open calls 
or to look in a specific country because you really know you want to go to, um, uh, let's say, France, <laughs> easy. Uh, then you have a really long list of residency and then you can see a bit what kind of offer is there, how um, your discipline is represented there and what places you can find. Uh, we are not the only platform, there are many other residency listings worldwide, you probably know some of them, but I would also recommend, and especially we were looking at the group beforehand and um, within the performing arts, I would really recommend to, to contact your own networks because usually they know within a specific discipline. I know that Circo Strada has been doing uh, mappings of residency within the circus field, for instance. Same thing goes for other disciplines or other regions. If you have a very specific uh, uh, goal, it's also good to, um, a specific discipline, a specific country in mind, it's good to contact either an info point in this country or a network in your discipline because they will really know um, the best residency for uh, your specific discipline. So that's also, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that our resources is not great, but <laughs> there are also really a lot of them uh, for you guys. And talking about other resources, about uh, residencies, Kira. Hi, so there's a lot of different networks out there, and honestly, one of the best places to start is just to Google residency for whatever you're doing. Um, and one of the platforms you'll probably find is called ResArtis, which is another very large network of artist residencies in the world. Uh, and then I run a network of residencies in China called China Residencies, which is a network of over 40 different spaces that give time and space and support and sometimes financing to create projects in mainland China and Hong Kong. Um, and yeah, echoing what Yohan was saying earlier, there's so many opportunities out there. Some of them are called fellowships, some of them are travel grants, some of them are incubators. There's so many different ways to find support for a project, and we know that the information is kind of hard to find, but you're in a room filled with people who can probably answer all of your questions. Um, so please, yeah, don't be shy and let us know what we can help you with. And getting, getting international is very exciting, of course, but sometimes it's interesting to see what happens in your own country or really in the neighboring country. So I'm looking at Marta up there because she works in Hungary, in Barcelona, and she can tell us about her experience in terms of residencies and maybe trends also that you see. Thank you, Elena. Well, yes, I work in Hangar, Hangar Barcelona. I know there is another Hangar here in, in Lisbon, and we, thanks to, to this meeting here in Lisbon, I had the chance to, well, we had the chance to meet each, meet each other. Uh, and for sure, we will collaborate in, in the future, even if we are to very different uh, initiatives. So yeah, Angari in Barcelona is a, a, an art production center, and also we have uh, several uh, residency programs, uh, most of them open to international applications, and uh, some of them granted, and some of them uh, self-funded by, by the artist. Uh, what I think it's interesting about Angar is that it's more that a residency space, we also provide support uh, to the artists and, and resources, uh, production resources, not just funding. And uh, in the region of Catalonia, uh, we are part of a regional uh, network of uh, art production centers from, from Catalonia. Uh, I, I don't know if you know it, it's called Xarxa Prod. It's, uh, I mean, it sounds... Uh, I suppose that sounds strange, but uh, maybe I can I can share the link with you later on. And uh, yeah, I mean, and we are there are about uh, 30 members, and uh, we are also developing a map of other uh, art production centers in, in Catalonia. So for us, such a small region as uh, Catalonia, we have a lot of uh, spaces that that provide space and resources to artists to. To, to do their work or to do research. Uh, well, basically, just to say that Hangar, Hangar is basically focused on uh, visual art, but also interdisciplinary practices and sound art and, and performance. And well, Sharsha Prot, the members are also kind of, of the same. So I think most of you here are from maybe the performing field, but uh, you are more than welcome to, to visit us also in Barcelona. Thank you. 
And maybe, I can't find Dushan. I was hoping, Dushan, well, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> I was looking too far away. <laughs> I thought you were wearing blue to film, but anyway. Uh, yeah, because it's interesting also to hear your experience from another country and from another kind of organizations. Uh, hello, I'm Dushan Doch. I come from Center for Contemporary Arts in Ljubljana. Uh, just a little bit to understand the, the position of the organization that I work for. We are really small, non-profit organization. We don't have employees. Uh, we have pretty much similar problems as most of the, many of Portuguese organizations, but at the moment, uh, it's uh, the municipality funds are more stable than the national funds, so these are the conditions that we work. Um, so my organization is actually network in different ways. One of that is locally, it's an association of NGOs and freelance artists, and they are struggling towards the authorities in Slovenia, Ministry of Culture, municipality, and that's really good that you have alliance locally and nationally. Then the other um, network that we are joined is On The Move, uh, and we are members for quite some long, t quite long time. Um, and uh, we have found some similar interests because we are also information providers, uh, not, but we don't offer that kind of support anymore. We couldn't manage because of the lack of funds. Nowadays we have uh, uh, the support for curators and critics in visual arts, and we have video archive. So via this network, actually, we could get some more information about different sectors like performing arts. We are more uh, connected. We m broaden our uh, knowledge about production, get new opportunities. And uh, one very good case was that via this network, uh, we got involved with a partner from the Philippines and then later get the support by Europasia Foundation. So that was really something that was valuable for my organization. And I appreciate that networks that are initiated from the ground and that are stable, that have a long-term uh, uh, vision. The other case, maybe not so successful of networking, was a project-based network. It was the network of video archives on European level and it, was, it had just uh, time-limited financial support and when this support was finished, we lost contacts, the network didn't evolve and so on. So my advice would be for every organization to a little bit check how they are structured locally, how, what are their needs internationally, because we all have these needs, that's a reality, and we are supposed to, uh, to um, evolve that kind of uh, need. So uh, the residences, grant opportunities, everything that my colleagues shared with you, it's really very valuable. So uh, for a starting point, maybe as you have also heard, try to, to see whether you need residency, what kind of residency networks exist, whether you work in a production house where there are some uh, networks about that. And in that way, you stay connected. And for example, uh, I'm not going to advertise Slovene producers, but we are uh, one of the best uh, um, organizations that get funds from Creative Europe, uh, Creative Europe program. And that's also the reason because the situation of funding locally and nationally. So they are well-trained, experienced, good partners. Maybe that's also an advice to start uh, with Slovenians. But otherwise, you see us, we are here from all over the, the world. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dushan. Maybe I will go a little bit in front because I think some people start to have a neck uh, problem. Um, so we have the reason eventually why to go international, why to develop projects in a European international context, the importance of network, how networks can be also entry doubts so toward that, uh, the trends and the potentialities also, lack of residency, as you say also, Dushan, is important when we talk about if we go back to this idea of network, it's not only like the formal and the big network, it's also like networks start from home, you know, like uh, also when you want to go somewhere, it's also to ask your colleague who are in the same uh, city, sometimes we have been already in another country, we have been developing a uh, um, project in this particular context. So it's how also you start your own informal network. Um, before we move a bit further, and uh, you know, like, you know, on the conversation, I would like to uh, ask whether there is like maybe one or two immediate question or remark also based on your own experience or what you 
heard here, or maybe like some of the okay, the idea with this with passing the mic also like to on the move member and after of course to you if you have any questions. This is the aim of this conversation is also to put a face on face, <laughs> but on different organization member organization of on the move in order after that to you know like be able to contact this person or to discuss directly you know like after this uh, this discussion. But do you have any? Uh, Direct question or comment? Yes? Uh, you have to speak with the mic. Yeah. I, I don't know if you're going to get into that uh, further ahead, but uh, um, because Lisbon is going to have an info point, maybe you could explain how it works. This is um, this is one of the questions will come up uh, in the in the discussion. Uh, this question of access to resources, so it can be information and also. Uh, we will come also, of course, to the question of funding. Yesterday, when we started to talk about this conversation, Mafalda say like people want to know about funding. Where is the money? And I say, yeah, this is a question we get everywhere we go. Uh, but of course, it's uh, after the question can be shaped differently depending on the context from which the artist or cultural professional are asking the question. So we'll come to this question definitely because it's a very important one. Is there any uh, remark or question in relation to? what we said about the motivation to go international, about the question of residencies, opportunities, uh, or about the networking aspect? Yes? So, yeah. And if you can uh, just say your name and, uh, yeah. The Tania Guerreiro, Produções Independentes, uh, Independent Productions. Um, my doubt about um, residencies is uh, uh, abroad is mainly because uh, most of the residences that uh, we can apply, uh, we have to pay money to, to go. Uh, even if we don't have to pay money to stay there, we have to spend money for the trips, the, the, the food for the people, the per diems, the, the artistic fees. And uh, I think we spend a lot of uh, our uh, time trying to find that money that could go to the peace or the creation that they are doing. And sometimes I, I think it's a waste of money and time and, and resources. So sometimes I don't really know why we do it. Uh, of course, sometimes we do it for, for strategy. We know that uh, if we go to somewhere, uh, maybe they will buy the piece after. But actually, sometimes it's uh, more money that we spend on that than what we will get in the end. Uh, and of course, there's other reasons for, for instance, uh, knowing the place, knowing the people, getting that for the peace. But residencies most of the times are also in, in places that we don't see anybody. So <laughs> we could do it uh, uh, here where we are. And I work with some artists that don't find uh, a reason to, to go abroad because they think like what yeah. I'm saying. That's an that's a, a open question, actually. Yeah. Um, maybe, I mean, I have some thought on that, but I guess Marie, Kira, on the residency aspect. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very true what you're saying when it comes to uh, residencies, with, and specifically within the performing arts, the cost of uh, having a company travel yeah, are much higher also. I mean, uh, with trans artists, we cover all disciplines, so, and most of the residency we have are for visual artists, the costs are lower. Uh, they have another incentive also to go abroad, let's say, but if, if I focus on your case, um, what I see more and more is that, or what I, yeah, what I can see is that uh, residency within the performing arts are very often on a national basis. You will do them actually close by because it's just much easier. You don't have to cater for accommodation. You can still um, focus on the residency in order to develop your piece and that you won't necessarily go so far away. However, on the international basis, it is indeed an investment most of the time. If it's, if it's completely funded, it's still an investment because you invest time, you invest uh, yeah, your company uh, uh, in, in this process. And I would say that it's quite uh, relevant when it has to do with a co-production that you will work with uh, other artists that, yeah, uh, the residency will facilitate the connection in this sense. Um, at least in my view, this, this makes a lot of sense then to engage with the residency. But indeed, the point you are making to, yeah, I don't see the point of going. It's not necessarily in relevant all the time. It's absolutely true. 
And this is something that um, we keep on repeating to many artists as well. Know, know why you are going, because yeah, sometimes it's also best to just do it where you are and to develop your work and don't um, over invest something if you, if you have too many doubts as well. So not saying like don't go anywhere uh, on a <laughs> session on international uh, mobility, but still, yeah, it's a it's a very uh, relevant. I thing. can add something else. Uh, also, I know some countries they 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 support uh, this uh, this kind of uh, trips, and but in Portugal that's that's not the case. Or they try they are trying to do it, but they don't do it in the the better way. So it, it doesn't really help on these uh, situations of, on traveling and getting money uh, for this uh, case. But uh, even then, um, it can be a waste of money anyway, <laughs> even if it's the government putting yeah. it. Of course, we, we feel your pain. We know how bad it is. We, yeah, we, we totally get it. Um, one resource that can be helpful is we just launched a new platform uh, almost a week ago that's called Rivet, and it lets you search only by things that have funding. So, and you can search by what has the most funding, and you can say, only show me things that give money, so that way you don't waste your time looking at things that don't give money. So that's a, a small step in the right direction. Um, and we're all here also doing what we can to lobby governments and also work with organizations to let them know that having something, even something that's free, can be very expensive. And we really want there to be a lot more transparency about what it actually costs to go on these things, because we know that not everyone can afford it. And we know that even though there are a lot of benefits to being able to travel, it takes a certain amount of privilege to be able to travel in the first place. And so we totally hear you, we understand, and we're doing what we can um, to try to fix this on a structural level, but also for individual groups. Um, and yeah, I think one of the best things to do is, like Marie said, is to, to do this kind of cost-benefit analysis, <laughs> um, not to sound too corporate, but to think about it, like what does it take from you? What are you going to have to spend? And what are the things that you could get out of it? And a lot of times, maybe there's a way to fund it by getting maybe some government support, maybe some private support, maybe some of your own resources, or a group of people, if you think it will be worth it in the end. But it's definitely part of the process of figuring out whether it's possible and whether it's worth it. I am so lucky. I have two mics now. Um, so we come in a natural way toward the question of funding, so it's just uh, <laughs> perfect. Just uh, two or three points um, uh, in, in relation also to what Kira said, um, and if we refer to On The Move uh, website as well, I mean, the kind of information that we are uh, signposting, we only focus on uh, mobility opportunities, be it residency, training, touring, collaboration, co-production, you know, whatever, exploration grant on funding where at least travels are at least partially funded. So if it is residency, we will put the one where travels are at least partially funding. And here you will say to me, yeah, but it's not because travel are funded that all the costs are funded. But usually when travels are funded, the rest of it as well comes into the package. I don't say in all cases, but at least, you know, there is a certain type of support. Um, I would like also to highlight, uh, this is also uh, an information uh, that we can share, but uh, with uh, Polo Cultural Gai Votas Bovista and in partnership with the Asia Europe Foundation, we will update uh, the mobility uh, funding guide for Portugal uh, at the end of the, I mean, it will be more in autumn, so it will be also another source to find, I mean, try at least to identify maybe like interesting sources of funding, which can be interesting for you. And it's the perfect moment where I can pass the mic uh, to Fatima and Valentina. So we're very lucky this year because also in our members, we have more like mobility funders. Uh, so like different organization where we can, um, which can also like fund um, mobility type of a project uh, and here we start more like with the connection with Asia, with Asia Europe, I mean it was already mentioned by Dushan, uh, you had also a project between Slovenia and the Philippines a few years ago, so it's also interesting to know about this kind of uh, funding opportunities which can be useful, maybe not now now, but you know like in case you are looking for additional funding, at least that the fact that you know that the resource is there, it allows you also to waste less time into searching for the information. Fatima, Valentina, we have two of you. Yeah. 
Hi, good morning to everyone. No, it, I'll just stay here. Uh, my name is Valentina and I work in Singapore uh, for the Asia Europe Foundation together with my colleague uh, Fatima. Just a few words to talk about the more information part of the funding, which is what we've been working on with On The Move for a few years now. Um, the Asia Europe Foundation, the mission of the foundation is to really bring people together from the two regions, so we cover a very broad uh, spectrum of countries, 51 at the moment. And initially what we thought was really useful is to find a one point online where people can find all a listing of all the organizations that are funding, because sometimes even knowing where to look for the information is not that easy. So we kind of compile these uh, guides, which are country-based. Uh, we work on all the Asian guides and the European guides with the On The Move. And then we also have one guide which kind of puts together the more international um, uh, foundation that cover internationally and also regionally within Asia uh, funding opportunities. In addition to this, so in addition to giving information on funding, we also have started last year a real fund for travel uh, called Mobility First. And my colleague Fatima was in charge of it, will give you all the information about it. And really we are looking at supporting individuals that want to travel. So essentially it's a travel grant, but we try to make it as simple as possible in terms of how to apply for the funding, because again, we know and we know for experience that we had in the past, for example, with Dushan, uh, we were running another type of program before, which was quite interesting but very complex because it really required a lot of preparation and a lot of uh, criteria to be able to apply. Mobility first is the opposite. So we went really simple and we said, no, we have to try and make this really as easy as possible for people to understand very few things. So I think we did quite well in year one and now we're starting with year two. So maybe Fatima can give you a bit more details on that. Hello. So um, as Valentina said, we launched the, the grant last year and it was, um, we had like 800 applications and um, around 20 were from Portugal, and um, we supported one. So <laughs> uh, in the second year, um, we encourage more Portuguese artists and cultural professionals to apply. We support three kinds of mobility routes, so from Europe to Asia, from Asia to Europe, and intra-Asia. So for Portugal, it would be from Europe to anywhere in Asia, as long as it's uh, in our member country um, list. We support a wide range of activities that is not boxed into types and so on. So it's residencies, um, festivals, workshops, trainings, uh, even go and see or short-term explorations because we see the value in getting out of your own context and um, um, going outside with uh, no particular pressure on a, you know, a concrete kind of output at the end. As Vali said, we kind of streamlined administrative processes and, uh, and reporting and everything's online and um, the website is there somewhere or you can approach us after. And um, yeah, we, we encourage more applications from, from Portugal and it's ongoing now. I just have a question because you said it's for individuals. We are talking also quite a lot with performing arts. Um, how is individual being defined? I mean, it's for people. I do understand this, but can groups apply or this kind of thing? Actually, there are two kinds of applications. One is for um, individuals as an in individual artists and cultural professionals who want to go out. So outgoing uh, mobility for groups we accept applications from organizations and the concept is that an organization organizing an event in, in their country, let's say here, and they can apply up to for up to five people from other countries to come to the event. However, for like dance groups or, or theater groups and, and so on, um, we tell them to, to submit an individual application or, or if a particular festival um, wants you, but there's only up to five and we are aware that big groups are like much, much more, so there's that gray area, yeah. 
and, and what? Yeah, we'll pass you the mic. Uh, just on to to say on that uh, also bec because we we work uh, together on this. Uh, but it's. Um, they really try, and we will have also the experience of the European Cultural Foundation uh, on the step. I will come to Helena later. But uh, this is important because you have the criteria of eligibility, you know, like you know which country you can apply from and the kind of eligibility also in terms of dates and everything. But there are always questions because each case is a bit specific. So it's very important also, like eventually, when cases are specific to contact here, it's like Fatima, so that you will be happy, you will get many emails from Portugal ap after that. But it's also important to get in touch with the person because sometimes you, you start the application process and in fact, this was not the correct way to do it. So it's also, again, a way to avoid uh, wasting time. Yeah. Dushan, yeah. from your, yeah, from I your will experience? Just, uh, yeah, just for short comment, actually. Um, whenever you have this international collaboration and you start uh, finding the financial resources, when you get one, like in our case it was Europe Asia Foundation, then you apply to different smaller grants. So we are collecting this patchworking of funding. And uh, I really like the situation, maybe you know it, when you are applying for another resource and you have uh, another uh, fund and you have uh, financial resources and you have approved applied, and when you stick the box approved, you say, okay, I have one seed money. And then it's easier to get smaller amounts from embassies, cultural centers, and that kind of stuff. So in that way, it can be a good, good, good starting or stimulation to, to collect the money. Even if you go to the residency, finally, you must have free financial resources, smaller ones, but at the end, you are there and you create something. Thank you very much for the strategy. Yeah, a question here. Thank you. Um, good morning to everyone. My name is Jesus. I am an artist here in Lisbon since the last six years, more or less. Uh, I beg your pardon for my English, as I am not in so many opportunities to travel abroad in international meetings, my level of English could be not so good as you. Um, I was hearing all the, all the points of view that most of them are from, uh, from a producing kind of point of view and not so much as an artist's point of view. Uh, so the focus is located more in the financial th thing, how to I gain money or to obtain money. And for the artist, and this is not the, the main point because artists are not about being a stronger or making uh, stronger uh, networks. It's about sensibility and vulnerability. And for us, it's very difficult to have a thinking of a producer because that, um, that makes uh, our art less uh, deep. So when we are applying to a grant, we have to think as a producer and as, as a, an, an strategic. And I think that you are all strategic. We artists don't need to be strategic and to make the application. I think that you are the one that could work with us as a kind of curator to have stories of success that people that are artists are not uh, producers, but you are making the, the way, the, how is the bridge, you know? Um, so uh, there are a lot of grants and you have to apply and you are losing a lot of time to think like this is strategic thing. And what about your sensibility and, and, and your presence? Because uh, sometimes, as, as your colleague uh, spoke uh, before, about uh, going holidays abroad in a kind of a residence way of life, <laughs> artists, artists is a kind of way of life. So we are all the time on holiday, but we are all the time working. I don't like the, the work work. The word work, I don't like. I like the dedication, the motivation. I don't like the, the, the word work. So we are all the time on holidays and all the time working and with 
our, our radar in the place. So the only thing that I'm saying is, it's very good that Europea, Europe um, distributes money and all of you are working to, to, to defend that money from the government to uh, place money from the, from the government uh, total uh, financial uh, amount to the culture side and not only in the industry or whatever. It's good for you to defend, but I also think that you have to uh, work f with the artist to make the artist not an entrepreneur, but an artist, a better artist, with the chances you are making for, for us. I'm sorry again for my English. You know, don't say that to a French person. We are very bad in English, so <laughs> I think your level of English is really good. Now, maybe to react on that, I mean, like, uh, this is a discussion that is often uh, pending, like this question of the artist as entrepreneur or as professional, this question of how you become a manager of your own professional life, like it or not, like this question of working. We have also some uh, on the move members who are themselves artists, so maybe they would like to comment on that. Here I am thinking of Mike, for instance, who is working, who founded uh, the African Cultural Policy Network, but you are yourself a prayer writer. So how do you deal, I mean, to react on, on, on this comment, on how to manage this question of being an artist, being focused on your creative life, and this question of managing the grant application, make your project sustainable, find new partner. I mean, it's difficult to <coughs> divide our brain, you know, like between this different type of uh, working methodology, which are totally different in an ever evolving context where opportunities can also arise from one day to the other. So any tips or advice for our colleague? Get someone else to do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, maybe um, if I can maybe start with a couple of stories, um, just in terms of answering this, but also talking about mobility. Um, I, I come from South Africa, and um, one of the one of the I'm very aware that people's necks are kind of being turned. So let me just maybe stand here. So um, one of the ways in which mobility also works is that there are these international producers uh, based in London, and they do these musicals like Cats and the like, and they come along to South Africa. And they basically do these productions with South African artists who are very talented, very technically skilled. Um, and they bring along their directors and their choreographers and their set designers to make sure that what audiences see is exactly what they would see in London or in New York or in Paris or whatever. But it's that production from South Africa that they would tour around the world. Because in terms of the economies of scale, it's much cheaper to tour a South African production of an international musical than it is to take an Australian cast or a London-based cast to an American cast because of the exchange rate. So they're able to pay um, South African artists at a much lower rate, um, and so profits kind of accrue to the international producers. In a way, it's like the globalization of the performing arts in the same way as any other product is outsourced to Vietnam, to Bangladesh, to China by um, you know, producers in, in, in the global north. So that's kind of one way of talking about mobility as well. But I just wanted to tell another story. About three weeks ago, um, I was invited to bring a play to Malmo. And it's a play, ironically, about African migrants and refugees. And it was going to be taking place at the International um, Cities of Refuge Network at their assembly. And um, the three actors were about to board a plane in Cape Town when one of them was basically refused entry onto the plane because there was a problem with his visa. And what, it, how it transpired was that he had had a gig in Denmark um, a few weeks earlier and he had got a Schengen visa from the Danish government that lasted until the 7th of May. So the gig that he was coming for in Malmo was happening on the 4th of May. Um, and when he applied for uh, um, a visa, the Swedish embassy, because Malmo is in Sweden, gave him a visa from the 8th of May. Um, when he tried to get onto the plane, they said to him, but this is a single entry visa. So you've used the visa to go to Denmark, so therefore you cannot use this visa now. But, you know, so he had to get off the plane, 
And we had to have all kinds of phone calls with the Swedish embassy and the like. And the next day, he had to take a plane from Cape Town to go to the Swedish embassy to get that basically changed. Because in terms of their regulation, apparently, they cannot issue a visa that coincides with an already existing visa. So in other words, if the one from the Danish goes till the 7th, then technically they cannot issue one that you know comes before the 7th. Even though the visa has been used, so technically it is no longer valid. If it's, a, if it's a single entry visa, it's no longer valid, one would think. But I'm raising this point because it kind of goes to, the, to these issues of mobility. The first story goes to the whole question of inequality in the world, you know, like, like who's able to travel, um, who has resources, who is able to, to um, I suppose, the, the power relations kind of inherent in international kind of mobility, who is able to provide the resources and so therefore is able to call the shots in terms of the aesthetics and, and what, what, how the program is, is kind of done. And the second one goes to the issue of who's able to travel in terms of you know, not being able to apply for a visa or not having to apply for a visa. We were just saying the other day that the UNESCO report on mobility last year showed that people from the global north you know, can travel to about 150 countries without a visa for at least three months, whereas people from Africa can travel to about half that number of countries without a visa. So if you folk, for example, given your historical relations with Mozambique or, or Angola are wanting to do a collaborative project, you would need to make sure that you know, those folk, your colleagues from those particular countries can travel, uh, are able to get visas for the time that, that you kind of require. So, that's, that's just like in terms of the broad discussion about mobility that I wanted to raise as well. But to come back to your question, I think it's a very, very, very valid question. It's something that we face you know, on the African continent as well. And one of the models that we have tried to implement is one that we really discovered in, in, in London, um, an organization that many of you might know is, is called Arts Admin. And I'm not sure if you have those kinds of models here. We're basically one arts administration company administers the affairs of a whole range of artists individual artists as well as companies. And they basically do all the applications on their behalf. They do all the narrative reports. They do all the tour organizations. So that the artists just get on with being artists. Not every artist wants to be an entrepreneur. Not every artist wants to fit into the neoliberal paradigm of creative industries and cultural industries, you know. So I think that we need to kind of take um, cognizance of that and develop models that really support artists who want to just be artists um, and, and not necessarily fit into what these big organizations are trying to make us all fit into, for what it's worth. Thank you very much. There is an immediate question here. Thank you. It's not a question. I would just like to add to what you said about who's able to travel. I'm Maria. I'm from Access Culture here in Portugal. We're an association of cultural professionals and cultural organizations that work for the improvement of access, physical, social, and intellectual access to cultural participation. So when we consider who's able to travel, and when the calls come out, and when you think about residencies, etc., I would just like to remind everybody that we need to think of the needs of disabled artists, and to make sure that uh, we don't exclude from the, from the start some really marvelous artists, because we didn't choose well, we didn't consider their needs when we chose the venue where the residency or the project is going to take place, when we didn't go around looking for the proper hotels, restaurants, whatever, transport, in order to give them equal opportunities to participate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Valentina, yeah. No, it's on the bottom, you, you just press. Okay, now, sorry. Yeah, what you were saying is absolutely important. And uh, just to add on to that, our fund, the Mobility First, also has um, a call open for people with disabilities, which is kind of part of the same fund, so we don't have any distinction, but we really welcome people with disabilities to apply as well, and we have allocated, obviously, more funding for them to have also someone to accompany them in whatever travel they have to do. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you very much. There were many issues uh, raised uh, in the different uh, last comments, also like the one, uh, of course I was expecting that from Mike, like many issues as well that we would like to raise, um, um, particularly because you mentioned this uh, issue of visa, uh, I mean like um, freedom of movement basically, like which affect a lot of people, including artists and cultural professionals, and it leads also to the point of where to find information on for, from organizations which can help to facilitate uh, this process. Um, and uh, here I would like to highlight that uh, for quite a few years uh, with On The Move, uh, we have been trying with different members of, uh, of On The Move, and many of them are here in the room, so it's quite interesting as well for you to know, uh, to have what we call the mobility info point. That means organization in different uh, European countries, and now even we have one mobility info point in the US, that is that. Um, which provide or uh, which aim to provide uh, information either on their website or on a direct one-to-one uh, -one type of consultation uh, process. Information about visa issue, information about uh, social protection, information as well about double taxation issue. This we get a lot of questions from Portuguese artists and dance company, theater, music group as well. Uh, so, and what we are very happy about, and this is what you were mentioning as well, is that now, uh, thanks to the support also of the city of, of Lisbon and with the Polo Cultural Gaivotas Boavista, I said it, yes, <laughs> but after there is another name that you will say, there is now part of the Mobility Info Point Network you know, like one organization which is uh, helping uh, for that uh, in, in Lisbon and in, in, in Portugal. And uh, I would like, to, um, maybe you can say, if you don't mind your story, sorry, Marta, Sofia? Sofia. Uh, I met Sofia uh, at the Producer Academy, which was held uh, last week uh, in Brussels, which is organized by CIFAS, and on the movie is one of the partners. Elena was also one of the contributors on, we talk about fair international uh, collaboration. And uh, Sofia, you mentioned a bit of, you know, like the same kind of stories that the one shared by Mike, you know, like all the difficulties you had, like to bring a, it was from Brazil or, and from India, I think it's, you have no, to from at the bottom. Yeah. Maybe if you want to share it. Yeah. Yes, I work in a um, cultural association, Matrias Diversos, and also I'm working with now uh, with a choreographer, Marcel Evelyn. It's uh, he's from Brazil, and he works uh, with uh, all of uh, interpreters. He's from Brazil, <laughs> and two from Japan. And our our difficulty is um, when um, they are coming to to Europe. Uh, okay, they can come for a period. But after then, if we want to tour on, the, on the Europe, uh, they need to come back home, and then because of the visa, the visa finished, and stay in the country like three, uh, 30 days, one month, and then come, uh, come again. So this is a, a big problem for us, for touring. And, um, so here I am passing the mic to Mafalda, <laughs> because what uh, Sofia said also when we were at the Producer Academy is that how the two of you communicated also on this issue and so that how your office can also help to provide information and facilitate that kind of process. Okay, so I'm going to speak in English, uh, but uh, I'm directing especially for the Portuguese artists and organizations here. Um, Lisbon City Hall uh, has opened this info point. It's an info point that uh, informs in bureaucracy for artists and uh, cultural organizations in what concerns to national problems, but also to uh, provide mobility facilitation. And in what concerns this visa example, uh, we talked about a lot about the, this problem. We read everything, we called everyone, <laughs> and then well, there we, we found a solution. But we also have this, well, it's not a formal protocol, but it's a, an agreement, a gentleman agreement with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, that works like this. If you can uh, send us the enough proof, which is not that difficult, uh, of the coming uh, of an, uh, a foreign artist to Portugal and you have a problem with the issue of the visa, we as Lisbon City Hall contact uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs 
and tell them, look, this artist is at this embassy asking for this visa, and we're sure that he's coming for this purpose. We've studied the, the situation, we have enough proof, so you can issue the visa. And actually, the ministry already does this with Erasmus students, and they told they were available to do this also with artists coming to Lisbon. Of course, that if they don't come to Lisbon and if they come to other place in Portugal, we are, of course, equally uh, available to take care of the, the process. Um, but actually, uh, Polo Cultural Gavotas Boa Vista has this info point. This is uh, situated in the same building in Santos, in Lisbon. Um, and we are open for presence attendance. We answer by email, we answer by telephone, we can Skype also besides the informatic problems, <laughs> but we can do that. Um, and we opened one year ago. It's completely free. So if you need anything, we are, of course, completely uh, happy to get you there and help with whatever we can. Thank you very much, and we are very happy to have like um, Portugal part of uh, this mobility info point. So maybe I will just mention some other mobility info points. So if Jana wants or Christine say something about the German mobility info point. And so we have Germany. Wh what is interesting as well is that um, in terms of mobility flow, uh, because or yeah, somehow because of where the money is coming from. I mean, it's true that there are many artists also like going to, fr to Germany, to France, to the Netherlands. I mean, Rainier and Marie also have a mobility info point in the Netherlands, so uh, also to the UK. Uh, Wealth Art International is also our uh, contact point, so it's also where, uh, I am with my two mic here, <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> where the mobility info points are. But it's, it's really important because talking about wasting time, wasting time about funding application, about all this administrative issue, and here every case is different. I mean, and now with also like, you work for a dance company, you can have dancers coming from different country with different visa requirements. So the more access to this kind of free, and professional organization, and all of them are also connected to local or national ministries, administration, sometimes also to legal consultants. So it's also a way to get updated information. Mafalda? I just want to add that I forgot, sorry, that when we had these visa problems, we also contacted other info points. So I contacted Mobiculture because we had a problem with France. And so it's not only Loja Lisboa Cultura, which is the name of the info point in Lisbon, but it's also the whole network that we contact and we get immediate and direct help from the other countries of the network. Okay, sorry, I forgot to say that. Thank you, Marie. I guess this is also the advantage to have this network that you get all connected also on an informal basis. So it's, uh, and uh, one of the most also like recent uh, mobility info point, it's the Czech mobility info point. Maybe you want to mention something about it? Uh, hi everybody, uh, we are now in like a work in progress. Now we have the web page only in Czech, but in autumn we will definitely have also English version. But there is my email uh, with contact, so if you will have some questions about mobility in Czech Republic, it's possible to do it now by email. By email, you won't find it on the web page in English, but it's also a possibility. So, and once again, the PowerPoint and all the resources will be available as well on the website of the Polo Cultural Gaivotas Boavista and also on the website of On The Move so that you have also direct access uh, to this uh, information. Uh, is there any immediate reaction, question on what we are, because it's uh, beyond the neck issue, yeah? We try to do something different, like running around and... <laughs> Uh, hello, my name is Francisco. I came here with Maggie. We are Los Pepes. We are visual artists. And actually, our question is for the, the Czech um, girls. It's like, we already have a friend in Czech Republic who has a studio in Prague, and we want to do some work with him. And we were wondering what's the best way to get funding to do that, to get a show there, and he's going to do a show here, maybe like a, an intercambio. 
intercambio, yeah. Um, uh, exchange, something, yeah, exchange. Uh, okay, I will pass the mic to two persons, to Pavla, director of the Art and Theatre Institute, the colleague of Martina, and also later to Helena from the European Cultural Foundation. Okay, my name is Pavla, and uh, my institution, uh, I must explain a bit uh, more about our institution, because InfoPoint for, for Mobility, it's our last project. But uh, we work internationally very long time, uh, and our big event also during communist time was Prague Quadrennial. It's still running. And uh, I wanted also to uh, show you that we have a lot of open calls for individual artists. You can uh, check on our website. But after 1990, we. Uh, deal with the situation uh, with uh, our new democratic system and with very weak independent scene uh, internally but also in the international cooperation. So we started to facilitate this work and creation <laughs> especially of artists and cultural workers. We started with educational activities uh, with exchange uh, residency program and this is maybe answer for your uh, question because you can contact us and we can uh, provide uh, because we provide support both sides uh, partly uh, for Czech and uh, foreign uh, artists as well and uh, also we um, do visitors program so for producers or um, managers of uh, companies or festivals, they can come and visit um, Czech events, uh, festivals. And of course, the last project, it's uh, InfoPoint for the mobility. So you could visualize Pavla, Martina, and you can also like, uh, so maybe uh, Helena as well. Helena is working for the European Cultural Foundation. So it's quite interesting because we have different representative of mobility funding. So we had the presentation, I mean, the introduction of the mobility fund, mobility first between Asia and Europe, or within Asia with the Asia Europe Foundation. But uh, Helena is running one of the oldest, she's very young, but one of the oldest <laughs> mobility fund, uh, not only from Europe to neighboring country, but now also within uh, European Union countries. So maybe Helena, you want to present about it? Yes, gladly. So hello, everyone. And to answer your question in this particular case of going to Prague, well, we have, I think, a very good one solution to it. We offer travel grants and in fixed, quite simple to understand, lump sums. And they, you actually, if you decide to go there with a, a slower method, so taking a train or bus, you get even more money. And the only requirements that we have for you is to indeed have a partner organization that's willing to write you an official invitation letter, but it seems like you already have one. And, and then you apply 60 days in advance. And this is the requirement because for those artists within our geographical scope of 59 different countries, a lot of them have to apply for visa. Uh, we want to leave enough room for people to also have those things sorted in time even if they would be dependent on this, this travel grant that we give. And STEP now, just to give you um, otherwise an impression, STEP is really focused on, on underground arts and independent arts especially. But you as an applicant, you can actually be well, an artist, cultural worker, but you can also be from another field, but work with the themes of arts and cont contemporary arts and culture. So you could be an academic, you could be a journalist, art critic, it's quite a wide uh, spectrum that we have, and it's really interdisciplinary arts that, that really pop up in this travel grant scheme as well. So similar requirements then can go for your partner organization that we really try to support NGOs working in this, this independent field, but they can ideally also have a dimension somewhere else, perhaps Perhaps they um, also represent the academic sector or, or something that only just touches the edges of what we see as uh, arts and culture, but, but want to get into it more. So step in this is in the content sense very flexible, and it's actually a way 
why are you traveling cultural practitioners to how we get this look into the, the contemporary wider European um, yeah, what's happening in the field and it's very very valuable information so this is why we ask you to write after your travel your travel report but this can also take actually a form of a film for instance or a short short video or another type of expression what is it that you experience and what did you see and we hear from from you and your experiences very gladly and even during your travel, you can also, for instance, take over the ECF's Instagram page if you want to showcase um, something that you, you witnessed during your travels. But so, yes, yeah, STEP can be found on our website, which has also, um, has also been shown here. Or you can ask me further questions if you want to hear, for instance, about the eligibility, which we try to keep quite open, of course, but um, certain limits are there. For age limits, the only limit is that you need to be 18, but there's no upper limit. And you can be a starting artist, you can be mid-career, or you can really have been in the field for, for a while already. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Christine and um, I'm coming from an organization in Germany uh, which focuses on the visual arts and I do get a question for you, Helena, could you just to give us an impression, just give us some figures, how many applications you receive each year and uh, how many applications you, you take? Yes, thank you. Um, so the volumes we're talking in step, we have something approximately 600 applications a year, but it's an always ongoing program, so you don't need to worry about trying to time your application into a certain time period. And approximately, uh, in the past three years, about half, uh, 55, 60% have been successful. And most of the applications that are not successful are unfortunately just uh, quite technical. And things like, for instance, that people did not fill completely the budget, which we try to keep simple, but we also understand that, as said, artist is not a producer. Artist doesn't even want to necessarily think in numbers. So we constantly try to keep this in mind as well and design everything, the, our online spaces or the application form, which currently has only five questions. But we really try to keep it also as accessible and as, as easy to understand for everyone. Because, so we are indeed based in almost 60 different countries and we have a huge variety of languages and, and backgrounds that, uh, of people that we reach. And also Sandy was mentioned about accessibility here in general and what we are doing right now is to uh, look into a website and make this also very accessible for instance for visually impaired artists and um, travelers. Thank you very much, Helena. Um, what I, uh, is there any immediate question before question? Maybe what we can suggest as well, because I, I think that maybe some people, and it's also what we uh, thought of uh, yesterday, maybe some people feel more comfortable after to talk directly to the person they would have put a face on. Uh, so maybe we can continue the conversation like during 20 minutes and after leave you time also like to directly talk to Helena or Pavla or other people who have been uh, speaking. There are maybe two or three uh, other points uh, that can be uh, mentioned. I mean, very much we, so here we talk more about this question of uh, information access, funding opportunities. In terms of uh, information access, uh, um, a few years ago when personally I started to uh, work with uh, On The Move, the information access were in Europe very much focused on the Western European country. And what is interesting for the past few years is that there have been like more platform of information in order to connect to, let's say, region, countries in Asia, for instance, but also like within Europe. And here I will pass the word to Gregor. Um, and uh, maybe you can explain a little bit about uh, the EPAP platform, yeah, thank you. Hello everyone. Um, I thought I will skip this uh, line of the presentations. Um, the, 
what I'm going to say will be also a bit uh, connected with what uh, what Johan and Anne, uh, Marianne um, said at the, be at the beginning. Um, uh, East European Performance Art Platform is it's not a network. We are not the the members' organization. It's a platform. It's an open space um, for now covering 18 countries of the Eastern Europe. Uh, the countries which we call themselves. Uh, we, we call ourselves Central Europe. Everyone else calls us Eastern Europe. This is the so. If I if I confuse you with these two different uh, words, that's it's it's more or less the same uh, part of the map, but differently called. Um, and if uh, if I would use two keywords uh, to explain how, why this project started, is a curiosity and feeling of a luck and feeling of the lack uh, of communication within the, the region. So whenever people from Croatia, Poland, uh, um, Slovenia uh, meets, it's, uh, it was for years much easier for us to discuss about uh, uh, the current scandals in a French uh, performing arts field or the, the big uh, productions in the German um, theater world. But we didn't know, we didn't know uh, too much about each other, and uh, especially after 1989, there was this big need or the wish to go to the West instead of working um, uh, uh, within the region. So this might refer to the curiosity. At a certain moment, we realized, okay, we don't under, we don't know our neighbors. Um, so what we try, and now coming back to the to the to the uh, to, to the question of Mary, what we try to do on the mobility level is uh, also gathering the the hard data. Uh, like, uh, of course, if you if you want to establish your mobility track, it's important to know that you need to have a visa issued in your passport when you want to get to the certain country. But it's also very much important to understand the narration of the difference. And uh, very often, it's, it's quite normal. It's if you are the, the Europe-based, Europe-grown artist or the human being at large, and you go to China or Japan, you expect the culture differences. This is something we expect when you, when you start your trip. When you go from Poland to Czech, uh, you might not expect, but this culture difference happens. Um, and there might be more radical sometimes, in a way. I will not go to the details, uh, <laughs> as long as it's live streamed. Uh, but um, so it's uh, the, it's it's as much important to gather the data about the uh, uh, the resources, the, the 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 taxation rules, the the international festivals you can reach, try to uh, to attract. To, to present your work, um, it's also as much uh, important for us as to kind of cover the narration of the region. How differently, because of the political, because of the historical reasons, we see uh, the culture, the society, uh, or the particular topics. Uh, so this is more or less what we try to do. And we move from Poland a little bit more eastward, maybe to go back to talking about funding opportunities available. Maybe you want to talk about Russia baggage. Hello, I represent the Russian Theatre Union and um, during the last few years we have been launching our new program, which is a general grant program and it is called Erbegesh. Its main goal is to stimulate artistic mobility and uh, international cooperation. And in the frame of this program, we support uh, cultural professionals uh, to visit international theater festivals and networking meetings. And these grant covers uh, international return uh, travel. And um, in spite of that, we usually define the list of the concrete events. We work on the separate scheme, which could be opened for any kind of the events for the foreigners to come to Russia. And um, please, if you have any project or you are interested to cooperate with someone in Russia, you, get, you could get in touch and we would be happy to help you to fund your travel. And uh, what else? I want to put attention to our website, which is rtlb.ru, English page, 
which contains some useful information for you, which will help you to plan your visit to Russia. And uh, so these guides are contemporary dance in Russia, contemporary theaters in Russia, which will give you some introduction to what is happening in theater fields in Russia. And uh, also the festival guides, as we have around 160 regular festivals in Russia, it will help you to find the concrete festival by genre, by uh, months, by city, and by the application deadline. And what else is the mobility uh, and networking guide, which was uh, developed in the frame of the SEEDS imagination, uh, funded by Europe Commission, with the main goal to stimulate international cooperation between Russia and Europe, and which contains some uh, advices on how to plan your trip to Russia. So this is useful things. Please come to our website. I will, I will just, I want to add shortly. My name is Anastasia and um, I just w want to say that I think that Ma Marie uh, was uh, totally right about the thing uh, that you should, yes, you, <laughs> this Marie, uh, that you should um, uh, try when you yeah, when you plan your uh, trip to go somewhere uh, that you should try to find contacts in this country I'm sorry I will try to turn <laughs> because we are in the center uh, of the room uh, because uh, we are uh, theater Union of Russian Federation and uh, art bagage program uh, is the example of uh, this opportunity for you to go to such exotic country as Russia you know uh, but uh, Sometimes we don't have, uh, in every country, we don't have uh, funding programs and travel uh, funds. But uh, in every country we have an uh, Arts East Institute of Warsaw or in Czech Republic. Uh, and uh, you can try to contact us just to ask for an advice and something like that. And I'm sure that uh, you can find uh, similar uh, organize, uh, or organizations in every region. Uh, and it will be a great start to to plan your visit there. That's just a short adding. So we are hearing a lot about about a lot of uh, interesting opportunities, free information available, funding. There's, there's money there. There's free information. I mean, I really hope that this session will help you to to dig deeper into opportunities that are there and that you will engage in conversations with the people who are here. Um, but I wanted to draw a bit of a line well, among different uh, things, the different words that I've heard today. Uh, I've heard talking about the artist and entrepreneur not being forced to also take care about um, that side. The gritty and just focus on your art uh, but still artists have to pay the bills so what about the fair practices in terms of paying artists and of course on a larger scale what about how can we make these international collaborations happen in a fairer way because we come from different contexts some of us are in positions of privilege you need to have strategic thinking you work between values and interests. So it's a large conversation. I hope uh, Rainier can read what I'm meant to be and talk about both fair practices and fair collaborations, because Dutch culture has been working a lot on both. Yeah, we as Dutch culture, we um, advise on international cultural cooperation with uh, the Netherlands, basically. Um, <coughs> and yeah, what we, we our aims are a bit like what Marianne said. Uh, we work for, we are funded by the Ministries of uh, Culture and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and they, uh, they believe that uh, yeah, the market outside of the Netherlands is, is bigger, so it's better to also make your money abroad. Uh, and also it's good for, uh, yeah, for your art artistic practice and it's good to have your quality measured internationally. Um, and uh, by advising artists from abroad and from the Netherlands, uh, we try to take away as many boundaries as possible uh, and to make it as easy as possible to work uh, outside of the Netherlands but also in the Netherlands by uh, pointing them to the right uh, partners, networks, the right funds because that can be a bit confusing in the Netherlands. Uh, and we can ad advise you on how to um, uh, how to phrase uh, a possible uh, application and where and uh, where to where to put the application and with whom, um, and we also uh, um, in doing so we try to yeah 
try to see which conversations are going on abroad and which conversations are going on in the Netherlands. And uh, a few of those conversations lately have to do with uh, a fair practice because there's uh, a lack of funding and it looks like, uh, yeah, the maybe you have experienced the same thing is that people are working harder for less money or there are more stringent um, uh, things that funds want from the people. So people are, are, are capitalizing on themselves, basically. Um, and we try to connect those different uh, discussions and the different solutions to these problems to each other. So that's what we, uh, what we do in networks like On The Move and with uh, Elena from ITM. Uh, we try to see uh, what's going on in the rest of the world and what, what can be inspiring uh, and enforcing the different, uh, uh, the, like different artists in the Netherlands and from abroad by sharing these experiences. And that's also why we, uh, why we contribute to uh, Mike's uh <laughs> toolkit, no, the, the ITM toolkit on fair international uh, collaboration. Um, because we, uh, we are there for, for the Dutch field and uh, we have to, uh, yeah, we try to give the Dutch field the tools to do their work as good as possible. But then uh, a lot of people forget that the Dutch field is very privileged in, in uh, the types of funding, the types of education and everything uh, that comes along with that. Um, so that's why I think uh, a toolkit on fair cooperation and is very important because we, uh, in that way we can sensitize the Dutch uh, cultural field in, into how uh, that privilege impacts their collaboration with other uh, organizations from less privileged uh, uh, contexts. So that's what we do. Uh, that's one thing of what we do. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think it's a good example to give here. Uh, there's a lot, other, lot of other things, but it kind of feeds into each other. Uh, so being active in these different networks, um, hosting visitors in a visitors program, uh, doing our work in the info point, mapping uh, the Dutch cultural infrastructure for other for outsiders to find the right place uh, quickly. It all feeds into each other, where we kind of uh, try to connect people to each other and try to make it as, as worthwhile as possible. Thank you very much, Rainier. Um, as mentioned, so we will come to a, a close like in uh, about like five minutes so that you can interact and relax your neck. And, um, but I would like to uh, uh, end this session as well uh, with one person here because it's also interesting to come back to Portugal here. Um, talking about Slovenia, which is a very good country as far as uh, EU funding application within the Creative Europe program is concerned. We have also another very good example here of uh, a platform, a European platform related to photography, whose coordinator is Procure Artists. So I think um, you were mentioning that like, coming from the visual arts sector, I think here it's a kind of mix of people coming more like from the performing arts sector, but also visual arts sector. So maybe Nuno, um, you can explain a little bit about uh, this platform, which is rather new. There was already an open call, but it may be also of interest of some people here. And if not directly for you, maybe for your colleagues who work in the field of photography. So. Um, <coughs> Hello. Thank you to be here. Um, uh, I'm working in Procurat, it's a small cultural association based on Lisbon. And uh, we design uh, several projects uh, related to uh, exchange projects and uh, European, mainly exchange, European exchange projects. Now we sometimes not very happy, not very easier uh, because there's a lot of work to do. Uh, but we focus on our attention in doing European projects. And, uh, and uh, coming back a little bit to the question that you asked uh, um, about why do uh, the European projects. The European projects to be done have to be a clearly uh, uh, static and conceptual choice to do European project because it takes a lot of work to do. And, uh, and if it fits uh, and it works, it's really good. Uh, we have uh, experience to make one big European uh, one, uh, um, cooperation project called Flaner. We run it during uh, two years and a half. And now we are running a new uh, a platform, uh, 
parallel European uh, photo-based platform that is based on visual arts. We're working with several uh, uh, eight, 16 countries. Now we have an exhibition uh, opening in Budapest, another in the Derby in England, and another in Maribor. It's not in the Ljubljana, but in Maribor. And um, the main objective of the project is to bring uh, emerging artists and creators to the art to the art system, to the art market, and also refresh the art market itself. Because sometimes the art uh, system and uh, the program, uh, the way to create and to program, it repeats over and over the same artists. So the idea is to bring new uh, blood uh, to the system and, uh, and also provide uh, uh, new works and uh, bringing refresh a little bit all the, all the system. And also, Provide, uh, uh, engage the work between the artists and the curators. Uh, here in the performing arts, it's more between the artists and the programmers uh, and the commissions. So it's important to bring both sides to us uh, to working together in European level. This project is running during uh, four years, uh, supported by the European Commission and also supported by the, the, the municipality of Lisbon. Uh, it's interesting, the first person that I talked officially, it was uh, uh, with my father from, uh, uh, about the project when we have the idea. And then uh, now we are running the project and we, have, uh, we are uh, half of the first year uh, and, um, and it's working very well. Um, so, if any one of you, uh, mainly for the visual arts uh, and are related, want to apply and to call, uh, come to talk with us, we are very welcome. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a great uh, adventure and it's very interesting. And it's interesting also that uh, we start uh, a long time ago, because uh, we exist since uh, 2005, but we start to be related with uh, On The Move in the beginning, so this, uh, this uh, small bug of the exchange project, European uh, uh, um, uh, exchange project, is from the beginning, from, uh, from our uh, uh, genetic uh, growth of the Procurat. And now, and then it's growing, growing, and now uh, well, we have this huge project that is running. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nuno. Uh, so I think it's like the time a bit of the thank you, <laughs> the global thank you. Maybe Mafalda wants to say something before the thank you. Actually, it's a thank you. I want to thank you on the move and all the members to be here in Lisbon to uh, attend the General Assembly, to choose Lisbon as the city to the General Assembly of 2018. And want to thank all the Lisbon and out of Lisbon Portuguese and non-Portuguese attendants to the public session that came here and make it bigger. Um, and I hope uh, it was really useful and I hope you enjoy now the, this second part that uh, is a more personal one, but I think it will be also uh, very concrete in your... Don't be shy, please. Ask everything because they are beautiful and wonderful and very generous people. And they will explain everything that you need, okay? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you um, very much. I mean, it's like the thank you time. Like, uh, <laughs> so thank you very much for Mafalda, for the team of Polo uh, Cultural Gaivotas Boa Vista, because we are all very happy uh, to be here. Uh, your center is one of the most uh, recent member organization of On The Move, and less than one and a half years after we are here. As I mentioned at the beginning, there have never been so many member organizations and individuals coming to a general assembly. So I think, of course, Lisbon attracts a lot as well, but it's not only Lisbon, because it's not only the weather, as we could see <laughs> outside. <laughs> so I would like to thank also Elena, who has helped me to facilitate the discussion. Uh, I would like to thank also this very quiet man there, but who has been very active. So Vijay is working, is uh, from Holland, uh, which is, uh, and they are like recording, and uh, so it was a live stream um, uh, event. So thank you very much. Uh, the website also of Holland is uh, in the list uh, here that 
will be also like available. What is interesting as well is that they are developing a world map uh, related to theatre. So it's also talking about access to information, access to resources. This can be also a very interesting resource to look at. So it's, you know, maybe now uh, I leave like the time for you to connect to the people. As Mafalda said, don't be shy. The camera will be off and you can go directly to the people. And uh, we hope as well that you get a sense of this uh, international pathway on the motivation, the network, the residency, the diff maybe some new ideas on mobility funding maybe for your project. And that, you know, hopefully, and, and, and also the fact that the international is starting from home, I mean, with some projects which are highly European and international focus. So thank you very much to all and have a nice discussion and thank you again to Horan. Thank you. <laughs>